A decade ago, SpaceX, a young and not yet regarded company, and Boeing, one of NASA's leading contractors, both won a multi-billion dollar contract to develop the Dragon and Starliner spacecraft, aiming to end the United States' reliance on Russia for transporting astronauts to the International Space Station. A decade later, while SpaceX has made sending astronauts to the ISS a pretty routine thing, Boeing's Starliner project is on the verge of collapse due to its failures to complete its first crewed test flight as planned. Even SpaceX had to save Starliner's astronauts. This is a major failure for such a long-established aerospace company like Boeing. So, what does the future hold for Starliner and its multi-billion dollar commercial contract they have with NASA? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Once a symbol of American greatness, Boeing has seen its reputation suffer since two of its 737 passenger planes crashed in 2018 and 19, resulting in the death of 346 people. The safety of the company's products has been under increased scrutiny since a panel of one of the planes exploded during a flight in January of this year. And now NASA has decided that it would be safer to keep astronauts in space until February rather than risk using the Boeing Starliner capsule that brought them to the ISS. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said the decision to send the Boeing capsule back to Earth empty is a result of commitment to safety. Indeed, this is a major blow to Boeing. The final conclusion is that the first test mission of the Starliner was not completed successfully. Although NASA has not officially labeled the outcome of the test, no matter what name it was given, the failure is evident to the public. According to the previous plan, Boeing was confident in the safety of the Starliner spacecraft, which was supposed to return to Earth with the crew inside. NASA targeted no earlier than August 2025 for Boeing to conduct the first crew rotation mission out of six operational missions to the space station. However, with the Starliner coming back to Earth in early September without anyone on board, it seems there's not going to be a launch till next year. Regardless of the Starliner schedule, considering the lifespan of the ISS through 2030, Boeing's never going to be able to fulfill the mission of the commercial crew contract award by NASA. Naturally, NASA will not rely on the Starliner, but will also use the more reliable Dragon for missions to the ISS. Notably, NASA's only granted Boeing authorization to proceed for three of the six potential Starliner missions. This milestone, known as authorization to proceed, is a crucial point in the contract where the customer, in this case NASA, places an official order for delivery product. Previously, NASA stated that it placed these mission orders about two to three years before launch. The commercial crew contracts are built on an indefinite delivery, indefinite quality IDIQ agreement, whereby NASA can order individual missions from SpaceX and Boeing as needed. If SpaceX continues to perform well and the space station indeed ceases operations by 2030, NASA officials may decide that they do not need more than three operational flights of the Starliner. That means NASA will change a policy that's been in place for a decade and a half. In addition to ensuring redundancy for crew transportation at the space station, another reason NASA chose both Boeing and SpaceX in 2014 was to encourage competition in technical capability and price between the two companies. A decade later, it's clear there's only one winner based on these criteria. Yes, none other than SpaceX, which faced significant challenges in the competition for the commercial crew contract under NASA's bias. Even NASA officials admit that decades of working with Boeing have given them a certain level of trust. As a result, they may not have scrutinized the company as much as they should have while they were also taking a closer look at SpaceX, which was also developing a capsule to transport people to the space station. We were, I would say, a little more used to the Boeing process, Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, said. It's one that we have used in the past on successful NASA programs like Space Shuttle and the ISS. But the present shows that it's SpaceX's Dragon that NASA needs to trust more than any other vehicle. The decision to bring the two astronauts on Starliner back on Dragon is entirely appropriate, further highlighting SpaceX's importance to the U.S. space industry. Conversely, Boeing seems to have returned to the shadows following previous issues that delayed Starliner's first crewed flight by nearly four years, requiring a second uncrewed test flight and costing the company over a billion and a half dollars outside the fixed price contract with NASA. Recent problems with Starliner, such as helium leaks and thruster issues, have led to two months of extensive testing and analysis, increasing the mission cost by an additional $125 million. Other troubles related to Starliner have occurred following Boeing's continuous struggle to reassure the public after two plane crashes, a near accident with an Alaskan Airlines flight earlier this year, and more recent issues with the upgraded version of the company's long-range aircraft, which have shaken confidence in this aerospace giant.
But from NASA's point of view, Nelson said that he has faith in Boeing, the prime contractor of the ISS and the agency's SLS moon rocket, calling the contractor a great partner for NASA over the years. So, will this trust provide any further opportunities for the Starliner? Starliner might have a chance to do more flights when private space stations under NASA's management emerge. After the ISS retires, NASA wants commercial companies to deploy human outposts in LEO. Ideally, these future space stations will be cheaper to operate than the ISS and will be open for NASA and commercial businesses to make money on them. Operators of future space stations will need transportation for crew and cargo, just like the ISS. Some companies involved in commercial space stations are in direct competition with SpaceX. For example, Blue Origin, Bezos' company, has paired up with Boeing to ferry people to and from the proposed orbital reef space station using Starliner instead of picking SpaceX for this task. However, many questions remain unanswered about when the first commercial crew space stations might enter orbit and the market prospects for these projects. Ultimately, human lives at stake and a profit margin to worry about, the owner of a private space station is almost certain to use a less expensive proven-to-fly vehicle for getting people to and from orbit. NASA and its international partners have not ruled out the possibility of extending the ISS's lifespan beyond 2030. If that does happen, Boeing Starliner could participate in more crewed flights. However, once NASA and its partners authorize deorbiting of the ISS, its dramatic descent through the atmosphere will not only mark the end of over 30 years of the space station's operations, but could also signal the end of Boeing's adventure in the realm of commercial human spaceflight. But before thinking further about this, it seems we need to see how NASA handles this failure mission of the Starliner. NASA and Boeing have to answer about how the Starliner program reached this point. The space agency approved the launch of the Starliner CFT mission in June despite knowing that the spacecraft had those helium leaks in the propulsion system. These leaks increased when Starliner reached orbit, which in itself was a serious issue that needed corrective action before the next flight. Ultimately, the problems with the thrusters surpassed the severity of the helium leaks, and this is where NASA and Boeing may face the toughest questions in the future. Boeing's previous Starliner mission, called the Orbital Flight Test 2 OFT-2, successfully launched in 2022, docked with the space station, and then returned to Earth for a parachute landing in New Mexico. The test flight achieved all its major objectives, setting the stage for this year's crewed flight test mission. However, the spacecraft also experienced thruster issues on that flight. Some thrusters of the reaction control system failed when Starliner approached the space station during the OFT-2 mission, and another thruster failed during the return leg of the mission. Engineers thought they fixed the issue by introducing a software patch to adjust timing settings and tolerances on sensors in the propulsion system provided by Aerojet Rocketdyne. But that ultimately did not work and led to a disappointing outcome for Boeing Starliner and for NASA. As for the issues Starliners came into this time, Boeing firmly insisted that they did not affect the return of the two astronauts to Earth. The helium leaks are understood, Boeing said. They've not gotten worse, and more than enough of the pressurized gases on board to push propellants to the thrusters needed to maneuver and stabilize the spacecraft through the critical deorbit braking burn to drop out of orbit for re-entry and landing. Likewise, Boeing engineers believe they understand what caused a handful of aft-facing maneuver jets to overheat and fire than lower than expected thrust during rendezvous with the space station, causing the Starliner's flight computer to shut down during approach. Ground tests of a new Starliner thruster fired hundreds of times under conditions that mimicked those aboard the spacecraft experience replicated the overheating signature, which was likely caused by multiple firing during tests of the capsule's manual control system during extended exposure to direct sunlight. The higher-than-expected heating likely caused small steels in the thruster valve poppets to deform and expand, the analysis indicates, which reduced the flow of propellant. The thrusters aboard the Starliner were test-fired in space under more normal conditions and all operated properly, indicating the seals returned to a less intrusive shape. But there's no way to guarantee the seals won't deform again during thruster firings after undocking or during the deorbit burn when larger rocket motors would generate higher temperatures in pods housing the smaller thrusters, which are needed to maintain the spacecraft's stability for a precisely targeted landing. We're committed to the mission, which is to bring Butch and Sunni back, said Steve Stitch, a NASA's commercial crew program manager, but as we got more and more data over the summer and understood the uncertainty of that data, it became very clear to us that the best course of action was to return Starliner uncrewed. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.